Welcome to this video describing the Apache Airflow and Control-M integration. This integration currently supports Airflow version 2 and above, either in a standalone Airflow deployment or as a Google Cloud Composer deployment. I have an Airflow 2.3 environment running on a cloud instance. Control-M uses the Airflow API, which by default is disabled. So you have to make sure you update the Airflow configuration to enable the Airflow API. It's a pretty simple process. You update the airflow.cfg file either directly or via whatever means you have in your specific deployment. And you have to ensure that you have at least basic auth specified and allowed. Let's switch the control and web interface and proceed to the configuration domain. We can check to ensure that the Airflow plugin has been installed. We can see here that it has. And next we can proceed to defining to what's called a connection profile. This is the information that Control-M uses in order to interact with Airflow. You give your connection profile a logical name and in the connection details, you specify the flavor of Airflow deployment. Again, either a standalone server or as a Google Composer instance. You then specify the host name. This is the public IP of the EC2 instance that we looked at previously when we examined the Airflow configuration. You specify the port number that you connect on. 8080 is the default, and that's what I'm using here and then you specify some credentials. You can test this information. Control-M will perform a login to make sure that it can connect to the instance with the information you've provided. If you prefer, you can create connection profile, and as we'll see later, the jobs themselves using JSON, and you can do that in whatever code editor or ID you happen to like. In my case, I will switch to VS Code. This is what the connection profile for Airflow looks like. It's exactly the same information that you just saw in the graphical form that I was using. In fact, you can go in either direction. You can create it graphically and export it or create it as code and then import it either way. If you are working as code, you can use what's called Automation API and its services to validate and to deploy this connection profile. Let's return to the Control-M web UI and look at what we call the planning domain. This is where we define and manage our definitions. Here too, I've already prepared some jobs that we can look at. In general, Airflow jobs are managed and behave just like any other Control-M jobs. That consistency is one of the major advantages of Control-M. In this workflow that I've pre-built, I have a mix of jobs. In our use case that we're implementing, we are orchestrating an order to cache application that includes SAP jobs. Data produced by the order to cache application is input for some of the optimization analytics that are going to be run by Airflow. In this workflow, we see an SAP job that represents the business application. Then an MFT job transfers the file that is required as ingestion or input to Airflow from wherever SAP has produced it to an Azure data lake storage location, where an Airflow DAG orchestrates the analytics. The entire flow is then wrapped in what's called an SLA so that we can monitor the progress and display it to business users in their dashboard. When building an Airflow job, we communicate directly with the Airflow environment to retrieve a list of DAGs so that we can select the one that we want to run. You can see here on the right, I've specified the connection profile if I did not fill it in, as in many Control-M fields, I would be able to get a list of available 
connection profiles. I want to choose Airflow. And once I have that information, I can interactively connect to the Airflow environment and retrieve the list of DAGs available for me to run. In my very modest environment, I happen to have only a single DAG that I can choose. I can then also specify how to deal with the Airflow logs. I can copy the Airflow logs into ControlM output. That would enable me to define programmatic post-processing based on events that I can watch for or monitor in the Airflow logs. If I choose not to copy any of the task logs into the ControlM output, I will still be able to retrieve those logs interactively. But once those logs are gone, they will no longer be available. If I do choose to copy them, not only can I define post-processing as I just described, but Control-M will also archive this output for long-term usage, such as analytics and analysis and comparing maybe failing runs to previous runs, as well as for any audit requirements that we may have in our environment. Normally, jobs are going to be run automatically by either Control-M invoking them on some predefined schedule or in response to some event. In my case, I am going to request manually or interactively that Control-M run this workflow. Once I've done that, I can switch to the monitoring domain, which is where jobs execute. We can see the job status change. It progresses from gray, which is waiting, to yellow, which is executing, and if successful, to green, or to red if it failed. As I select each job, there's a variety of actions as well as information that I can retrieve from Control-M. If we look at the Airflow job, we can see that there's an Airflow tab as there is for every application that Control-M integrates with. And in this tab, we can see all of the tasks that make up the DAG that we just ran. In addition to any Control-M information, we also can interactively retrieve the log for the particular task we are looking at. And this is getting information directly from the Airflow environment. If we had chosen to copy logs into the Control-M output, the logs would then be available for us to view interactively in Control-M output, we can define actions that Control-M would take in what we call post-processing after the job has completed on the basis of this output. And of course, this job output will be archived according to the policies we have defined for retention of, these, of this kind of output. We also have at our disposal all of the other capabilities that Control-M provides in the operational environment for every Control-M job. As we highlight a job based on the job status, various options or operational actions would become available. If it was running, we might be able to kill it. Once it has finished, we might be able to restart it. If it has failed, we can either choose to ignore the error or to explore it further. We can also launch the Airflow Web UI directly from Control-M and work with this particular DAG in the Airflow UI if that is what we prefer. And ultimately, because we have defined an SLA, there is a services view available to us as well as to any business users, and they can access this information from a mobile app as well as from the web UI that will give them overall status of the entire end-to-end -end business service. In conclusion, you've seen how you can integrate Airflow DAGs into business applications orchestrated by Control-M. If there are actual dependencies between data pipelines and business applications, they can be easily managed and defined within the Control-M environment. And anyone who is responsible for monitoring both data and traditional business workflows can use a single consistent tool 
to get a single pane of glass view of the entire enterprise. To learn more about the new Control-M integration with Airflow and other Control-M21 features, please visit this webpage.